This is an original slave bangle. Yes, it's hard to comprehend, but this thing, and it's very weighty, was worn by an African slave in the early part to mid part of the 19th century. I know that for sure because it is an original, genuine slave bangle. Now, it's a very important historical thing, this, with a very important historical tale to tell. It has a value historically and it has a value financially and I'll, I'll get on to both of them. I want to talk about its history first because it's vitally important to understand at this time in history and I've got to tell you that this Omani brass bronze slave bangle has a direct connection to the famous Victorian Scottish missionary Dr. David Livingstone. And I mean this in a very good way. There's a very good connection, not a negative connection. Because I'm gonna tell you something that you probably don't know. Dr. David Livingstone was instrumental in bringing to an end the East Africa slave trade in Africa and the island of Zanzibar, where the slaves that wore these things were sold, not just for spreading the gospel, spreading Christianity and democracy as he saw it throughout Africa, he brought the trade to an end. But let me tell you, I'm going to tell you about that, but let me tell you about this thing first. And even holding it, weighing it, it's very heavy. It is really hard to comprehend that a human being wore this and that human being was a slave. And it's very decorative, you can see that. I don't really want to talk about its quality and its beauty and all of those things. It just, I don't feel it warrants it. But you can tell that it was decorative and worn for decorative purposes, but not by choice. The slave didn't choose to wear this. This was forced upon them by the slave owners. And you can, you can see how it is joined here. So it opens up and then it clasps closed and then it is sealed. So the wearer cannot remove this thing. It has to be removed specifically with tools and whatever by the slave owner or workers of that slave owner. So it was an ornament for the slave to wear on behalf of the slave owner. Now, if you know anything about Dr. David Livingstone, you know that he was around in Africa post the abolition of the slave trade. So the British abolished the slave trade in Britain in 1807, and then around the rest of the empire in the early 1830s. Just after that, Britain spent untold amounts of money on paying to have any slave within the empire made free, buying their freedom. It cost them so much money, in actual fact, that the British taxpayer didn't stop paying for that debt until 2015. So if you pay tax, in Britain any time before 2015, you have paid tax to abolish the slave trade. That's another story, but what's interesting is this, that the East Africa slave trade was going on post the abolition by the British of the transatlantic slave trade on the West Coast. In fact, after the 1807, 1810, somewhere like that, the British set up a, a squadron called the West Africa Squadron, the Royal Navy, to patrol the west coast of Africa to stop the slavers trading in, in slaves. And they did this for over 60 years. And again, a great financial expense, which is nothing compared to the lives lost British sailors, not only fighting the slavers, but also, of course, dying of all sorts of terrible tropical diseases. So, yeah, the British Navy, uh, well they freed thousands of slaves, captured slave boats, but of course they stopped hundreds of thousands being transported across the Atlantic. But when Dr. David Livingston went to Africa as a missionary, his aim was to spread Christianity, but first and foremost, his aim was to bring an end to the East Africa trade, slave trade. So this was an Arabic African slave trade, Oman, Think of the map of Africa right to the top on the right-hand side, right up there, that's Amman. And these Arabs were trading down the east coast of Africa, buying slaves from Africans who would go in, inland into the central parts of Africa and capture slaves. Wars were fought purely for slaves. Political prisoners were taken and then sold into slavery. So 
the African slave traders would sell the slaves to the Arabs, who would then transport them across the water to the island of Zanzibar. Now, Zanzibar is this little exotic, beautiful holiday destination today off the coast of Tanzania. But during the uh, 19th century, it was the slave hub. This is where the slave trade was really going on, slave markets on a daily basis, and the Sultan of Zanzibar was making a fortune out of it. And just as an aside, by the way, people say that um, the oldest profession in the world is prostitution. Well, that may well be so, but the second oldest profession in the world is that of a slave trader. Dealing in slaves has been going on since man set foot on the earth. And by the way, it's going on now. I researched this recently for a book I've got coming out next year. I can tell you, which is a bit of a shock to me, it was a shock to you, it'll be a shock to you, it was a shock to me. 40 million people, it is estimated, right now, today, as we're speaking, are living in slavery. 40 million. So even though the British abolished it in the early 19th century, it didn't finish the trade. So 1850s, 60s and 70s, when Livingston was in Africa, it was buoyant on the Arabic side. So the slaves were getting sent to Arabia and India mainly. Now, if you remember school lessons, history lessons with Dr. David Livingston, you might remember that he, he became lost in Africa. You know, accounts of his travels, of his escapades, being attacked by lions and all these kinds of things were making it out of Africa and the public loved reading about him and his adventures effectively. Um, but he was lost and so, Henry Stanley from the American newspaper, the New York Herald, was dispatched, if you remember your school history lessons, to Africa to find Dr. David Livingston, which he did. And when they met, of course, those famous words of greeting, Dr. Livingston, I presume. That's what Stanley said to him. Now, Stanley spent some time with Livingston, uh, tracking around Africa, making notes as journalists would, and Livingston recounted the experiences he'd, he'd witnessed firsthand of the slave trade, the Arabic traders, the abominable treatment of the slaves, and of course, the abominable trade itself. Now, Henry Stanley went back to New York. He published the letters. The letters were, were read in America, in Britain, and all over the, the rest of Europe. And the readers were shocked. They thought the trade had been brought to an end, but no, it hadn't. It had been going on under their noses like it is right now, today. And the public demanded something to be done about it. So the British, of course, at the time, the height of the empire being the policemen of the world, sent ships and representatives to Zanzibar and informed the Sultan of Zanzibar, in no uncertain terms, you bring your slave trade to an end. You close these slave markets. If you don't, we're going to blockade the whole island of Zanzibar and bring your economy to an end, not just your slave trade, which was making a fortune out of any other trade. Your economy will be obliterated to zero. Now, the Sultan of Zanzibar believed the British, and so finally, in the early 1870s, the Anglo-Zanzibarian slave trade, anti-slave trade agreement was signed. And the slave markets in Zanzibar, the Omani slave trade, the East Africa slave trade, the slaves that were wearing these ankle bangles, that trade was closed down as a direct result of the letters published by Henry Stanley recounting the stories of Dr. David Livingston in Central and Eastern Africa. What a tale. I mean, it sends shivers up the back of my spine to think that real human beings, and not just one, by the way, this thing you can tell by the wear has been worn by, well, generations of people. So historically, yes, it's important and it shouldn't be forgotten. I've owned this for a number of years and you know what? I've been guilty of just putting it away. It's lived in a drawer. I didn't know what to do with it. I took it in part exchange amongst many of the things many years ago. I always knew what it was. I didn't know what to do with it. 
but I, and I was unsure whether to make this video. But after reading accounts recently online and other places, negative accounts about Dr. David Livingston, I just thought, come on, this is ridiculous. Does anybody know that he brought this trade to an end? So I wanted to tell the story. So you'll find these things online. They are often converted. They have little bases welded in in brass and copper and made in the late 19th, early 20th century into novelty ashtrays. Well, not much fun there, I don't think. But you can buy them, and yes, they have a value, and their value range between 100 and 200 pounds. But their historic value is, well, worth more than its weight in gold. And I can tell you, it's very heavy, and it would have been very uncomfortable to wear. So I'm now going to keep this out. I'm going to keep it in my living room. And if anybody comes in and asks what it is, I'm going to tell them with great pride that the Scottish miss missionary, Dr. David Livingston, he, by the way, who had no education at all. He, he started life in a workhouse and crawled his way up. So he came from nothing to achieve great things. He, Dr. David Livingston, was, is, was responsible for bringing the East Africa slave trade to an end.